In this video we're going to look at solving a system of equations, but I wanted to show this example not just because of solving the system, but also because of all the fractions. And fractions seem to give people a little bit of a headache sometimes. So what we're going to do is we're going to employ a technique called clearing the fractions, which basically means we're going to get rid of all the fractions. We don't want them in there. Before we even worry about solving the system, we're going to get rid of the fractions in each equation. So the way we start that is we want to look at the equation separately. So let's look at this first equation right here. And we've got uh, threes in the denominator. Basically, we want to ask ourselves, what is the least common denominator? And in this case, it's three. What you're going to do with that number once you determine what the least common denominator is, you're not going to get a least common denominator. You're going to use that number and you're going to multiply every term in the equation by three. So if I were to do this out the long way, it would kind of look like this. I'm going to multiply this side by 3, and I'm going to multiply this side by 3, which is completely legal. What you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other, and that's legal. You can do anything you want to both sides of an equation as long as you do it to both sides. On the left-hand side, we end up distributing this 3. Writing it out the long way, the problem then looks like this. If you had 1 third x plus 2 thirds y equals 12, you might just do this on your first step. Multiply this by 3, multiply the second term by 3, and multiply the other side by 3. You're multiplying every term by 3. Even if that term doesn't have a fraction, you have to multiply it by 3. Once you get good at this, you can um, skip this first step up here with the parentheses and the distributing. But I really wanted to, to show you that um, you are multiplying every term by 3, and, and it's the distributive property that you're using. Now, since we've multiplied by 3, you want to cancel. That's the key. I get so many people, and I ask them in class right here on the second one, what's 3 times 2 thirds? And they say 6 over 3, because they're doing 3 times 2 divided by 3, instead of just canceling these in their head. Yes, it is 6 over 3, 6 divided by 3. What is 6 divided by 3? It's 2. Just cancel the 3s, and you have 2. What's the point of multiplying by 3, then dividing by 3? It's like saying, where am I going to end up if I take 3 steps forward and 3 steps back? You're going to end up right where you started. So just cancel the 3s out and avoid all the work. It's just stand still. All right, so what do we end up with? We end up with x plus 2y equals 36. That step right there allowed us to clear the fractions, and now this equation looks a little bit less intimidating to some people, maybe. Let's look at the other equation. Other equation, same technique. Let's look at the denominator, 6 and 3. What's the least common denominator or the least uh, common multiple of 6 and 3? That would be 6. So in this equation, let me separate them by a line so we don't get confused. In, in this equation, we're going to multiply each term by 6 times 6 times 6. And always remember to do the other side by 6 to keep your equation balanced. What do we do next? What do we do next? Hopefully you're saying cancel, cancel. So these sixes are going to cancel right here, six and six. Six and three, that'll, three goes into three once, six goes into six twice, or six, three goes into six twice, excuse me. So we end up with one x, which we can just write as x, plus two y equals 36. Hmm. All right, now, um, something kind of interesting happens on this problem right here when we're solving the system. The equation I have over here and the equation I have, uh, the equation on the left and the equation on the right, they're the exact same equation. Usually when you're solving a system, you use the elimination method or the substitution method or something like that, but these two equations are the same. So the answer to where these two lines cross or what values uh, of x and y make the equation true are going to be, there's going to be an infinite number of values. And um, I know in the, in the homework that uh, a lot of you have, you have the option of giving a point or there, the second option is there are infinitely many solutions and third option is the solution set is empty. In this case right here, it's um, infinitely many solutions. Now that doesn't mean everything is a solution. That's a little bit, um, a little bit tricky. But 
If you want to write it out in set builder notation, it's the set of all points x and y such that x plus 2y equals 36. What this is basically saying is the solution to this system is any point x and y that makes the equation x plus 2y equals 36 true which is all the points on the line x plus 2y equals 36. These two original equations that we had when we started, they're the same line. If you were to graph them, they would just land right on top of each other. They're the same exact line. So they don't have just one point where they cross. They, they land right on top of each other. All right, so that's, that's all there is to that. Uh, hopefully that helps. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know.